Good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. We are still very close to what was the peak of this season's hurricane threat the main threat, the peak of the hurricane season, which is right around September 10th. And we are going to continue to have a higher risk for these systems developing and quickly becoming tropical depressions, tropical storms or hurricanes. So I'm here to update you on what is happening out in the tropics. So let's go ahead and get right to the forecast. Of course, today is September 13th. And before we get to what's happening out in the tropics today, I want to go back in time about 15 years back in time and talk about what we were dealing with here in southeast texas about 15 years ago in 2008 this was the day that hurricane ike rolled into galveston and made landfall early in the morning with 110 mile per hour maximum sustained winds it was a category two and it just caused a lot of devastation and destruction across the galveston area and we had a lot of dangerous storms surge, flooding, high wind. It rolled right over Houston and then it drifted off to the north. So fortunately, nothing like that happening for us today. In fact, we've been spared all season long. It has been a very quiet hurricane season which is good news for us. As I just mentioned, we just made it past the peak of this year's hurricane season. The peak was right around September 10th and it is September 13th. So we're a couple days past the peak, but we still are in that period really for the next four weeks or so where we could still have quite a bit of activity out in the tropics, especially in the Atlantic Basin. So of course, hurricane season runs all the way through the end of November. So we still are preparing for what could be a busy month ahead for more of these tropical cyclones developing. We already have a few that we are monitoring closely still out there right now. Of course, we've got Hurricane Margo, not expected to be a major threat to land anytime soon. It should stay far away from the US, but Hurricane Lee could impact parts of the US, especially by this weekend. We also have another strong tropical wave developing a little bit farther south. That one is Invest 97L, and that one could become our next name storm this weekend or next week. The name would be Nigel. First, let's focus on Hurricane Lee because this one poses the biggest risk to Bermuda and also to portions of the US, likely New England, up towards Boston, maybe Maine, other portions of the Northeast could feel some impacts from Hurricane Lee. You can see that eye right there, not seeing a big solid band of showers and storms completely around the eye. So it's weakened a little bit, but overall it is still a fairly healthy hurricane and it is still maintaining category two status. So it has weakened a bit. It was a major category three as of the last update, but with our most recent update, it is now down to a category two. But nonetheless, it could still bring some impact, some heavy rain and some wind, dangerous rip currents, big time surf to portions of Bermuda and also parts of the Northeast and maybe even up towards portions of Canada as well. So these are our computer model forecast and the majority of these at this point are taking it very close to the Northeast US and into portions of Nova Scotia likely by this weekend. So here is the latest track for Hurricane Lee. This is the latest advisory around 4 p.m. Maximum sustained winds now down to 105 miles per hour. That puts it at still a solid category two and movement is to the north northwest at 10 miles per hour. So pressure at this point 952 millibar. So it has gotten a little bit weaker, but it is still going to have the threat for that heavy rain and also some strong wind gusts as it moves towards Bermuda. Now at this point, the only warnings that we have out for Hurricane Lee are for the Bermuda area. As far as I know, we do have that tropical storm warning for Bermuda, but I do expect the Hurricane Center to be issuing some advisories, maybe some warnings for portions of the Northeast as Hurricane Lee gets closer to those folks as we go into the weekend. So right now, Lee with 105 mile per hour winds, it should weaken a little bit more by Thursday afternoon. Winds down to 100 miles per hour as it's getting close to the Bermuda area. It should pass by Bermuda late Thursday night into early Friday and gradual weakening is forecast as we go through the rest of this week. Now let's hop to the weekend Friday night into Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon and Hurricane Lee is still maintaining category one hurricane strength by Saturday afternoon around 1 p.m. with 75 mile per hour winds and notice where that cone of 
uncertainty is it's just east of Boston, but it does clip central and eastern portions of Maine. So there could still be a U.S. landfall with Hurricane Lee, and it could make landfall as still a hurricane as early as this Saturday. Also in that cone of uncertainty, we've got portions of Canada over towards Halifax, Nova Scotia, so there could be some impacts felt there as well. Now, Hurricane Lee is expected to weaken to a tropical storm for the second half of the weekend, but the one thing to note is that the wind fill in Hurricane Lee has really been growing, and those tropical storm force winds extend far out from the center along with the hurricane force wind. So even though Lee is not going to make a direct landfall in Bermuda tomorrow night or Friday, morning it is going to get close enough to potentially bring some tropical storm force winds to portions of Bermuda and also the threat for some heavy rain and of course that big time surf so that's why we do have that tropical storm warning out right now for Bermuda. Even as we go into this weekend Saturday notice that wind fill from Lee clipping portions of the Northeast, including Boston, especially up towards parts of Maine and over into portions of Canada and Nova Scotia. So definitely some alerts, some watches, some warnings likely going to come out for some of those spots as well. Of course, we also have another hurricane out in the Atlantic. This one is Hurricane Margo. And the forecast right now for Margo calling for it to do kind of a little loop here over the next few days. It's just going to kind of meander, kind of stuck between systems out there. So it's going to kind of try to do a little loop, meander over the same areas, but it's not expected to hit any major land area. Right now, still fairly healthy. Category one hurricane with 90 mile per hour winds, and it is expected to remain a hurricane for the next couple of days. I think by Saturday should start to weaken to a tropical storm with 60 mile per hour winds and winds down to 50 miles per hour by Sunday. But you can see it kind of drifting to the north now and then it's going to kind of curve back to the south and southwest and then start moving northwest again. So it's going to kind of loop around itself, but it is not going to come anywhere close to the Caribbean islands or close to the US. So we've got Hurricane Lee in the Western Atlantic, still a category two hurricane. We've got Hurricane Margo in the Central Atlantic, still a category one hurricane, but we also have another fairly strong tropical wave in the central to eastern Atlantic. So this one is called Invest 97L. It is moving west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And there is now a high chance that it could turn into a tropical depression or tropical storm in the next 48 hours. So by this weekend, we could have another depression or tropical storm on our hands out in the Atlantic, even higher chance to develop into a tropical system over the next seven days. So I do believe we will have likely tropical storm or hurricane Nigel in the next couple of days out in the Atlantic. The movement at this point is to the west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that may keep it out of the Caribbean. It will likely keep it out of the Gulf of Mexico. So that's good news for us. But once again, we'll have to monitor it and see if it stays on that track because there could be some impacts several days out once again for portions of the U.S. East Coast. Before now, we have to be concerned about some impacts from Hurricane Lee for the East Coast. It's going to miss the southeastern coast, the mid-Atlantic, but after it passes by Bermuda late Thursday into Friday, it's going to roll into the northeast U.S. and likely bring some of those impacts. The stronger wind, maybe one to four inches of rain to portions of the northeast as we go into late Friday, Saturday, and then it should start to exit by Sunday. So that was the European model. Now we're looking at the GFS or American model and you can see our hurricanes out there. They're going to be sliding north, but then you will also notice that tropical wave kind of getting more organized to the south. So this is Invest 97L, which will likely become Nigel and it will be getting closer to the east coast by early next week. So we are going to have to closely monitor what happens with Invest 97L because depending on how sharp of a turn it takes, it could get pretty close to the east coast and maybe impacting portions of the Carolinas, the mid-Atlantic. Too early to tell, but of course we'll be tracking it closely. But right now, it does not appear that it is going to come anywhere close to southeast Texas. So far this season, it's been pretty active. We've been through 14 named storms already, five hurricanes, three major hurricanes, and we are right around those numbers that we would have for an average season. 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. But the problem is that 
we've still got a few more months in the hurricane season, so it certainly could end up being an above average season. At least things are quiet for the Gulf of Mexico, for the Caribbean, not much at all going on. We do have our chance locally for some showers and storms, but it's not going to be originating from anything rolling in from the Gulf of Mexico or the tropics. So certainly good news there, but of course, warm sea surface temperatures remain out there in the 80s to low 90s. So that still remains a concern down the road. If we do get something to develop, that super warm water could help those systems to really start to form and develop even quicker. Also very warm waters for much of the Atlantic continue. So that's why we are still concerned that we could have more named storms added to this list over the next few weeks. So like I mentioned, the next name on that list would be Nigel. That will likely be Invest 97L once we get into this weekend or next week, depending on how fast it develops. But fortunately, it looks like it is not going to be headed this way. So nothing heading for Southeast Texas for now. But of course, 15 years ago, we had to deal with Hurricane Ike. So that was definitely a lot to go through. Of course, we had Harvey, we've had several others. So, so far, so good. Quiet for this hurricane season. But of course, still make sure to download our Fox 26 weather app so you can keep track of all things tropical. You can keep track of your local weather as well. There is plenty to see on there. We've got our video forecast. We've got the tropical weather. And of course, you can track anything popping up on radar. Just head to the App Store, search for Fox 26, so you can get that downloaded on your phone. Well, that is it for your daily tropical forecast update. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade.